Hey everybody, Matt Orr from Wedding Games here again, and today I'm joined by Vladimir Brodovic. Uh, he is a LARPer, cosplayer, a strongman, and the uh, founder and CEO of Gullum Security Services. And Vlad, welcome to the welcome to this interview. Pleasure to be here. So we're going to start off with just uh, just some uh, first thought, best thought kind of questions here. Okay, All right. cool. So, um, what's the best working act? How so? Like uh, nail through the nose, fire breathing. Oh, my favorite, my favorite working at that I, I, that I do. Um, I think my favorite one I love doing is I pull vehicles with my neck. Oh, wow. Um, I pull right. buses, large trucks with a train wreck on my neck. Uh, it's one of my go-tos. Um, uh, the one that really gets the crowd, though, is I am known for taking a one and a half million volt stun gun for 60 seconds. Uh, directly to the gut while standing there, and it doesn't phase me. Oof, that's uh, that sounds intense. <laughs> it's left right. a couple scars, but uh, yeah, it always gets the crowd. I bet, I bet. All right, what's the best LARP? Best LARP for me, um, the one I've had the most fun at still to this day has got to be Dystopia Rising. Uh, Dystopia Rising is a post-apocalyptic LARP that spans across the nation. Uh, I used to run a chapter of it. Uh, the player base has been great for the most part. Uh, the writing has been really good. And I just have a lot of fun uh, getting into that genre. Awesome. Awesome. What's the best war film? That's a hard one. Um, I know. The I'm one sorry. that I watched way too many times because I, I really love it was Hacksaw Ridge. Um, for those that don't know that one, it was about the only person to get a Congressional Medal of Honor, and he never picked up a rifle. Um, he was a combat medic. Uh, he has a phrase that he used to say when he was saving people in the one battle, main battle he was in, of, oh, Lord, just let me do one more. Mm -hmm. And when I'm lifting, when I'm exhausted at my age, still doing all I do, I kind of use that a lot of times to keep going. Uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic movie. Amazing. All right. So hopefully some little, little bit lighter tone here for the next sure. couple. Uh, best grilled food. Best grilled food for me is a stuffed st uh, skirt steak. Uh, take the steak, cut it in the middle to, into a pouch, put your vegetables inside of it, sew it up, and then put it on the grill. Can't beat it. All right. Sounds pretty good. Uh, and best song. It's a very broad one. Best song for me um, has got to be a song called Immigrianata by Gogo Bodello. Uh, Gogo Bodello is a punk band originally out of Jersey, I believe, uh, but their lead singer is Ukrainian. Uh, he's Ukrainian Roma, and the song is just, it's a powerful, it's upbeat. Um, it's definitely my, my go-to. Awesome, awesome. All right, so as we were talking a little bit before, I... I before the thing, uh, before this started, mm -hmm. I, I was telling you about how, like, I, you know, and you know this, I knew you already, I had met you, I gamed with yeah. you, but, like, the thing that really sparks me, wanted to talk to you, is, like, I found out that you did, um, oh, I'm skipping the question, so let me go back <laughs> to the first one here. Uh, sure. So, you you talked about, um, you're a LARPer, and you talked about Dystopia yeah. Rising. And I know you've also done work as a strong man. You talked about the neck, uh, pulling the car mm -hmm. with your neck. Uh, so, like, I see those things as kind of being rela related and kind of like performing a character. So, tell me about like LARPing and, and like what that is to you. And, and... sure thing. Uh, LARPing for me has definitely been a labor of love. Um, I get way too into it, uh, whether it's doing the SCA and having to have heavy clothing made specifically for the time period or post-apocalyptic or being in the world of fantasy. Uh, I always try to make everything as bright and as uh, exceedingly as possible. Uh, but the thing I love about it is you can take a whole weekend and forget about the work stress that you have, the political stress you have, and just enjoy yourself with friends for three days. And it gives you that good chance to break free and just relax for a bit and i've always enjoyed it that's, that's great and, and do you see the 
do you see that as related at all to like performing as a as a, a strong man yeah because i mean you you have to have a character you have to have be when i'm on stage i have to be a larger than life version of myself uh, to be quite honest i have the most horrid stage fright i have for years um i get the nervous butterflies sick to my stomach for stage and then the mu minute my music hits i'm louder than life i'm jumping with the crowds um work in the crowds and it's because i can just i'm that person yeah during that now when i'm at home i'm not but right uh when you're when the music hits it's it's another world so yeah, yeah. between in that aspect i can see it being kind of like larping yeah. of having a character i see those yeah so thank thanks for that i i definitely get that sense of like i'm not a terribly outgoing person myself but like if it's called upon me to be outgoing in a specific context mm -hmm. it's like okay i can do that and i can really push forward but then like yeah like i don't i like to turn that back off and then go sit by myself for a bit <laughs> um okay so this is the question i started asking before um, sure but uh, like i was saying you you i was really in, in, amazed to hear like this is we're recording this in uh, August of 2020. Uh, it's been a, a real, real six months of a six months, hasn't it? Uh, yes, it <laughs> before has. this, um, but you, I was amazed to hear how many games of Never Going Home you were running. And why don't you tell people about like that whole, all of those, all of that, how that came to be, uh, sure. what and what that experience was like. Um. As everybody knows, I'm a huge, huge fan of Never Going Home. The, it's a great system for me. But when the quarantine happened across the country and people couldn't leave their homes, I was really worried about a lot of my battle buddies and veterans, as well as just people that are very outgoing and extroverted, uh, having a rough time with that. So I created a Discord channel, and I thought maybe two or three people would get on there, and we could chat, we could play tabletop games, and runs never going home, it'd be great. I never thought it would get into the 30, 40, 50 plus active players wanting to play. Um, That's a lot. And with Discord, you really can't do as much as you can in person. Sure. So you got to change things around. Uh, so what I would do is break it into different groups, different campaigns, and then went to the old living Greyhawk days of the 80s and made every campaign, every mission connect to each other. So it always happened at the same time. So they would get reports from the different battles and so forth and tried to link it all together. Um, it worked great for the first couple of weeks. It got a little too much towards the end. But uh, at one point, we were running two to even three games a day, five to even some weeks, seven days a week. Um, going through besides the, all the content that thankfully Wet Ink had created by that point to I was already having to come up with writing my own full missions and handouts sure. and everything else as well. Right. Uh, I, well, right. Because if you're doing like the, 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 the missions that were created are kind of all over the place. If you're trying to have like cohesive one right after the other kind of things, you'd have to. I had to modify a little bit, but yeah. Sure. I bet. I bet. Uh, so, and, and, well, what was your favorite, uh, mission to run or the most successful of those, uh, that you Ooh. did the, of the uh, ones that either, either one you created or one from the book? Uh, for the one from the book that really, uh, we had a lot of fun with because they thought it would be kind of a joke, uh, mission was the mine mission that you got, that you all wrote, or the tunnels. Mm. Uh, uh, what lies below, I think. Yeah, what lies below. Well, I guess from my time of running horror LARPing, uh, let me change things so the little gremlins that were in part of it, instead of them being more kooky, like critters, that cheesy 80s TV shows, we really turned up the notch and made them more Lovecraftian and made things a little bit more dangerous for people um, and really brought the horror out. So we actually had a couple players actually yell out 
on chat because they got spooked because I'd use music to cue at certain intervals and things of that nature. Um, it was a great mission. Uh, we thought it would take like two hours. I think that one session lasted five um, because people just wanted to constantly go through every little nuance and try to figure things out. And they were doing it by the book very much as a mission, uh, not as a Monty Hall loot game, uh, sure. which I was just ecstatic with. Yeah, that, that's amazing. Uh, it, to, to have that intensity of it, like, and I guess, say you, I see your big headphones, you've got like that, that kind of sound, that sounds yeah. like a, a, a jump scare with sound is sort of like perfect, I guess. Yeah, I use, I use um, high and soft uh, ones, so, if I'm in that mood where I do not want to hear the fireworks during Fourth of July, mm -hmm. I can turn these on, crank them up full blast, and I'm not going to hear anything. That's amazing. Uh, is there anything else you want to kind of you want to talk about about that uh, that experience running running in the running such an intense set of games? Uh, during yeah, it, it, quarantine time. I really loved how I could get players to work together because I could also shortly after about the first two weeks. Uh, I could figure out what players were really into it for missions, which ones were min maxers, which ones yeah. wanted the horror, which ones didn't. So we could separate them via time slots um, to get everybody to work together. So everybody had the most enjoyment. Um, did I have a few players that got really upset by the high, high kill count that can happen in a brutal game, such as never going home. Yeah. Um, but even the ones that died the most, I think one of our players died something like seven times in mm. three weeks. Um, he kept coming back for more. Um, uh, they absolutely loved it. Uh, and I love the fact that I could, while playing it, we're talking about a book and they're like, give me one second. And they would go download and buy the book and, and okay, now I can understand more what, what I can do with this. And we were just having an absolute blast. Uh, my private game has everything from um, actors out on West Coast to military veterans. Uh, so we got to really get in depth, really great RP from across the country on this one night out a week, and it was just phenomenal. And I had a blast. Yeah, that's that's amazing. I'm glad you did you did so much with it. Uh, that's and uh, you know I, I've told you before, but I'll tell you here publicly again like uh, thank you for being such a big advocate for the game and getting uh, being such an ambassador for the brand you know it's amazing <laughs> i'll be honest i was getting out of tabletop gaming until uh that one random game that we met uh where you all were pushing uh wild skies and mm -hmm. brought up the idea of never going home uh, it's what brought me back into tabletop gaming uh it's just really well done it was a genre that i missed all right, we'll put a pin in that. We may come back to sure. some Wild Sky stuff in a second, but I got, I got another question that we want to ask before we move to there. Um, I want to know what's uh, next for you and what's, uh, I know um, you're on the, uh, you're on the, you, you, you've got a lot, you've got a lot of things going on. So like what's- uh, I always do. Right, what's, what's uh, some stuff that's going on for you next, uh, coming up in the, in the near future? Well, in the near future in the gaming world, um, I'm hoping, knock on wood, uh, we hit our mark for Kickstarter uh, so I can write an add-on for Zhangxi. Uh, I can't say enough how happy everybody's been when they see the diversity of this game, diversity of the, of the creators of this game. Um, and as far as I know, I might be wrong on this, but as far as I know, if this gets made, it'll be one of the first books showing Romney in a non-stereotype manner in a tabletop game, which has been a dream of mine. I've never seen it done, and that is meant the world to me. Yeah, that'll be it. It, it has sort of evolved uh, from the original focus uh, with all the pop, the stretch goal expansions to include so many other. Uh, perspectives and uh, mm -hmm. that, that is really exciting uh so i don't know if you you probably can't uh probably shouldn't say anything more uh, about that uh because you know mom's the word until it until it happens and, but, until uh, it happens it happens yes right right 
Um, anything else on the on the on the docket for you uh, that you want to talk that you want to mention? Oh, in the gaming world, I'm. Oh, what was that? You don't have to. I just yeah. Uh, well, in the gaming world, of course, I'm you know I'm always coming up with new designs and writing things that I'll send to you all for <laughs> never going home. Uh, I've probably got forty or fifty things I've written just for the gaming groups I've ran for on ideas. Sure. Um, but I always love writing for that. Um, for LARPing, I'm still coming up with props and designing things for people. Um, due to real life and the things going on, especially in Louisville, Kentucky, I have had to put my LARP creating and prop making on hold. Um, some things just um, became a little bit more important for me. Um, but I still try to get in there and do what I can. I understand. All right, you ready to do a pitcherama? Sure. Okay. So, um, the way this works is I got a five minute timer here, and we're gonna okay. record. We're gonna give ourselves only five minutes, and as big of an idea as we can get. So, we am gonna start the timer, and then I'm gonna tell you this this one little seed, and then we'll we'll kind of pitch about what it is here. And I, you got it. So. I, I, you mentioned Wild Skies earlier, so like I know mm. you're a big fan of Wild Skies. So I really am. So it's so we're going to do Wild Skies, but not set in the 1930s. So that's the only thing. That's the only restriction. So what should we do instead? It's it's going to be that world, that basic system, but not 1930s. Where do, where do you want to see it? Who uh, the Three versions that come to my head real quick is the more diesel punk 1950s idea would be great. The idea of seeing those elements and that style, especially with the what would be more almost Adam Punk look to right. things would okay. be kind of cool. Uh, the artwork would be great for that. Um, the artists that you all always get are just amazing. Uh, Thank you. Uh, a modern age would almost give it a neo shatter run feel to it uh, which right, again about, i could see people doing never really thought about um, computers in wild, wild skies yeah uh be different. to see something like you know a ferret uh archetype being a hacker type would be both hilarious and awesome to play at the same time sure uh, uh that would just be just ultra cool to me um and the last one i would just have a field day with would probably be to do a full medieval campaign. A medieval one. That would be uh, to do a, you know, even as late as 15th century, you know. Ooh, I like that. You know, late, the late period that, towards the, the twilight of the nights and the age of gunpowder and industrialization. Right, that, that will uh, cross over where you've got armored knights, but they're carrying like a brace of pistols instead of yeah. a lance or whatever. Yeah, that, um, that, that real narrow. You no, know, even if it's just like before that, right when it's the beginning, especially if it was the if it had a, the Asian writers writing for the beginning of the heavy of the heavy gunpowder against plate and such, I think would be uh, a lot of fun to do and a lot of fun to explore. Plus, I found that a good tabletop game, if it's written correctly, is a great jump off point for people to learn and educate. Mm. And if yeah. they like that genre so much, well, here, here's a book to learn. Here's videos to learn more of that genre to help write better. The amount of learning I've gotten just from never going home has been amazing. And that, just that process. Sure. Sure. So in that respect, like, yeah, the, 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 I don't know even what to say that almost not age of sale, a little bit before that. Right. Like, uh, yeah. Um, almost like the, early renaissance height of the silk road you could have like all of that travel back and forth on that that uh you know the the very east meets west stuff along the silk road there yeah it's really more like east meets middle east meets west because mm -hmm. everyone was involved along the whole line you know um i don't know so so if that's the case then we gotta we gotta think of uh some fun things here so like who what what kind of animals we want to map to some of the figures from that era uh like uh um animal types like uh, is it i don't know like uh the con the, the conate would be uh like a dynasty of tigers perhaps or uh, is that too obvious oh, i, 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 I could more, definitely see that 
wolves are, um, I guess, are more central to the Mongolian identity, I think. Um, yeah. Um, about famous kings. Be a Mongolian cognate done and that genre would be great um because you hit the nail on the head on that one when i do fantasy larping that's the culture i i I really do a lot of rp of is mongolian as well as down as far as turkish so the nomadic horse people that's that's my jam i that would be amazing to see um that would probably get me just to buy the book just right there alone (laughs) so so i think part of the appeal of wild skies is the sort of like crazy diesel punk machines and stuff like that so what yeah. kind of machines would we want to see in that era right i mean they had siege machines and and stuff like that but we're talking like full like da vinci notebook style oh yeah definitely war, or like uh, would it be even crazier stuff i mean if you took the a uh, the weapons that were even created back in that era like the scorpions that would fire multiple bolts at one with one volley and give them da vinci level almost um to quote uh, fantasy, almost like a gnomish gear work uh, yeah. design. Um, sky's the literally the limit <laughs> for how wild things can get. Uh, no pun intended. Uh, oh no, I think the pun was perfectly intended. Uh, I, the creation would be just amazing. All right. Well, that's it. That's our five minutes. We threw out some ideas okay. there. Uh, hopefully, that's the. Uh, get some juices rolling. Maybe we'll have some uh, off camera discussions and uh, sure. yeah. Uh, Vlad, I really appreciate you talking to me today about uh, winning games and like the life of a nerd. And uh, <laughs> so that's, uh, you got any, uh, any, any final things you want to throw out to the, the people watching this video or uh, is uh, that good? No, nah, I'm, I'm pretty good. All right. Well, again, thank you for being here today. Thank you for watching. And uh, that's the end.